I'm going to talk about uh, food printing. Uh, it's a bit of a story about my internship at TNO. That's from the next slide. I've been at TNO for about five months for an internship, and I've worked uh, on food printing for the next generation food printing. So, like I said before, I'm a fourth year student of industrial product design at the Hague University, and currently at the moment I'm uh, working. It's a bit of a research at FabLab Maastricht and working on different types of 3D printers. So, why food printing? Uh, why should we print food? Um, there are some uh, different opinions from people from why should we print, but mostly what my opinion about it is that uh, much more efficiently. So don't throw away the food that you don't need, just the food that you want. Also, the, the people that uh, can use printed food is like elderly people that can use uh, specialized food for them and not eat what other people want to eat, but eat what you want to eat and that's better for you. Yeah. So um, also uh, babies. The different printing materials at the moment is just a short impression of what's going on with printing food, from cake to pasta, to icing on cakes, uh, cheese, chocolate, and by chocolate I'm going to talk a bit more later on. Uh, so some printing techniques, uh, from our research I searched for which technique can be used for printing food. The main three techniques are FDM, SLS, and uh, powder bed printing. Um, they are very different from each other, and uh, it's really difficult for some time to print. But for FDM, there are some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, most of all, it's very easy to control. It's a cheap system to use. Um, but the disadvantage that mostly is that it's not so very fast at the moment. And uh, you need support for it. So you cannot make every food that you want. Uh, selective laser sintering. Also, there are some advantages. Uh, you can print multiple ob objects at the same time because you don't need the support material because the powder supports the objects. Uh, but the disadvantage is it's a very expensive machine, so if you want it at home, it's uh, too expensive. Uh, powder bed printing, uh, that's almost the same like selective laser sintering, but then not using a laser, but set up that uh, use some sort of liquid to bind everything together. <coughs> It's also something that works, but very difficult to use at home. And some other com uh, concepts about uh, other companies. Uh, one of them is Electrolux on the left. Uh, that's very interesting. Uh, the image has a bit really strange. But uh, MIT did some sort of concepts. On the right side <coughs> over there, there's one concept that's actually being made. And here are some uh, stuff from TNO. On the left, there are some cookies made from uh, uh, worms and uh, paprika and pepper notes, and like in Dutch. And also chocolate printing for an event uh, from Food Hack. So that's where I printed 100 different chocolate pieces. And this is one of the nicest things that I've done. I went for one week to a uh, one star Michelin restaurant and we printed non stop from 9 hours in the morning to about uh, 12 hours in the night. This is what we printed, a concept by three different continents. And this is a 3D printed chocolate, real chocolate, and you can eat it. And there was a video, but I don't think it's working. But if you want to look at it, or you can search for it on the internet on RTL, there's a video about chocolate printing that uh, I've been doing. So what are the conclusions? Uh, so printing food uh, can be good for some sorts of uh, uh, ways, for groups, for environments. Uh, it's better to use. Uh, you can print with different ingredients, more than only plastics. Uh, and you can create uh, very nice stuff. So that's uh, a bit of my presentation. Thank you.